Hello, hello. Hey. Mr. Owens. Um, Ken, to the many unanswered emails that I have back to you, or or to your latest one, um, yes is the the answer that there are some of the things that we're going to talk about today. It, it's the it has always been the intention that some of that would go uh, into academic publication. So, awesome. Um, and if there's an, if part of that means collaborating with you, all the better. <laughs> 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 it, it doesn't, but I, I definitely can collaborate if you want. No problem. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> but it, it can it can be. I was just he was just asking. I'm doing a proposal for my like thesis I did 20 something years ago now, right? And he wanted to update it and submit it. And he asked if I knew anyone else that had interesting things going on in the space. And I thought of you. So nice. so you definitely don't need me to collaborate on it. You can go in with you know you and you know whoever you're working with names on it for sure. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. You, you thought of the, the first, <laughs> you thought of what, what, what nerds do you know? And uh, <laughs> <yeah. laughs> Great. Thanks. Thanks. I'll, uh, I know, I know lots of nerds, at least you should feel like <laughs> special, right? Cause I, I have plenty of nerds in my background. I can reach out to you. I picked <laughs> you above them all. <laughs> Where were you just, we're just digging that hole deeper. We just, uh, the, <laughs> 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 well, I felt bad about the yellow snow you were drinking, you know, so I felt like I could reach out and give you a, give you an olive branch. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. No, the, moving on, moving on. <laughs> uh, oh, well, uh, very good. Um, uh, we've got um, some, some, the folks that are on the phone. If if you've got access to the doc, please drop your name in. Uh, record your attendance. We've got maybe one more minute before we um, get going. In in this minute, it's a great time to add agenda items to the bottom of the list. Um, and actually, seeing Daniel here is great. Um, Daniel, welcome. Hello. Speaking of of unanswered emails. I'm going to have an awkward moment here in about 10 minutes, I think. Um, hey, Lee. Yep. Good to meet you. No worries. Oh, very good. Okay. Dan, if I, if I may, Daniel, if I, if I may add um, a conversation on Submariner as a, as a topic, if that's, help, if that's helpful or wanted today, but, but if, if not, then, you know, feel free to take it off. Okay, I actually lost you for a few seconds there. Uh, oh, um, you know, I'm gonna I'm dropping um, Submariner in as a as a topic, uh, assuming that that's okay, desired. Cool. But okay. Um, yeah, I, I, we. I, my plan for today was just to say hello and then try to figure out a time to give a presentation. I wasn't planning on doing a presentation today, if that's okay. Sounds sounds good. Thanks. Nice, nice to have you, Daniel. Yeah. Uh, Daniel, since we're shooting the breeze for just the, the briefest of moments, um, anybody else um, here with you? Let me just check the participant list. I added it to our community calendar, but no, I don't see any other submariner people here today. Okay. Fair enough. So, someone's got to lead the way. I, I get it. So. Yeah, I'm trying to kind of help with our CNCF. Um, Effort been pushing that for a while now, just herding sheep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. Well, we're uh, folks. We're we're about six after. Um, let's let's get going if we could. Um, um, there's a couple of you whose names are relative, maybe perhaps fresh to me, which is so I'm super encouraged to see um, Anita um, here, um, uh, as well as Daniel, and then we've got. Some some uh, some familiar names on the call as well. Um, this is a, what I'm about to do is slightly atypical for most of the CNCF calls that I that I see and that I participate in, but I like to do it on this call anyway. And if it makes anyone feel uncomfortable, don't don't sweat it. But I wanted to. So Daniel and I just had a brief interaction. Daniel, that was pleasant. 
hopefully you feel encouraged and welcome. I thought- Yes, um, thank you. Good, good, good. Uh, um, Anita, um, I figured it'd be nice to say hi or to, to let you say hi to everyone. And um, um, yeah. Hi, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Uh, so hi, my name's Anita. Um, I'm actually just uh, subbing in a bit for one of my colleagues who comes here more regularly, Christopher Hansen. Uh, he's sleeping because he's teaching an India time class now, but um, uh, we're both from ArcSem. We're a cloud native training consulting firm and uh, we just like to stay on top of things with CNCF and uh, always great to observe and see what's going on in the space. So hi everyone. <laughs> hello, hello, nice. Very good, very good. Um, Thanks for joining. Yeah. And um, folks, I don't, I don't say this enough. Um, Ken lets me ramble on and, and give, you know, say bad jokes and that kind of a thing. But um, so, so Ken Owens and, and, my, and myself are um, here as co-chairs of the SIG network. Um, just to familiarize everybody a little bit, we have um, SIG network. It has, mm, I'm trying to think of not very strong language, but um, it's the home base for you know any number of network and traffic and protocol related projects that are within the CNCF. <clears throat> and our order of business on those um, it tends to be fairly light. And so uh, because we have such a strong set of um, sub work streams happening in the CNC in the um, service mesh working group, we've been using this time uh, to advance those initiatives. So we've been spending a lot of time on those. Uh, so as we get into the topics, we'll just to help, I don't know that that clarification is, is totally necessary. I think that the, the reason I bring it up is because we'll end up speaking about a couple of projects in specific for quite some time. And that's not because we don't wanna do justice to other projects, it's because it's because we have the time so we, so we do it. So. So if I, hopefully that wasn't confusing, but so the first couple of items um, that we have for SIG network um, is, just, is just a reminder that um, emissary ingress or the project that's formerly known as ambassador from ambassador labs from I think formerly DataWire, uh, it's proposed for incubation. It's been proposed for a while now. It's out for public review. So if you have, they, I know that they appreciate um, supportive votes and feedback otherwise. So everyone here is welcome to um, go make a comment or go, go show support. Another thing that was relevant, um, not to SIG network, but to all the SIGs is that, and maybe particularly to SIG network, actually, now that I think of it, is there's a popular Kubernetes um, working group or SIG called SIG network. Sound familiar? Yes. Sound confusing? Yes. Um, Kubernetes SIG network is you know, focused and concerned with networking within that project. Um, so the two are distinct, but so there's a proposal out right now to rename the CNCF SIGs to CNCF TAGs, technical advisory groups. That's of interest to people. Um, Daniel, we actually happen upon the topic of Submariner fairly, fairly quickly. Um, Daniel, for those that might not be familiar with, with the project, did you mind um, giving, j just letting people know kind of the high level what the project is about and we'll put a link to it so that people can. Yeah, out. sure. Uh, so just in a few seconds, it's a multi-cluster networking project. Uh, we've been working with the multi-cluster networking, SIG and Kubernetes, following really closely their CAP process, implementing multi cluster networking and service discovery right behind them, basically. Um, it's just a healthy open source project that we're open to get into the CNCF as well. It's kind of the angle that I'm here for. Um, yeah, happy to talk about other details if people have questions, but we'll give a longer presentation with all kinds of details later. Beautiful. And Daniel, um... The canonical link to the project or the the project submariner.io i can add it to the schedule submariner.io and then there's a github that 
as similarly named. Very good. Nice. Good. I, it's been on the been on the radar for a while. It's, um, or I mean, before the even the interactions on here, just um, I take or for my part, I take a note of the project. It's interesting. Cool. Yeah, I thought you found this. I think we met very, very briefly, or I saw you at least at the last in-person KubeCon. And then we've been working during the pandemic a lot. Our timing started basically right before the pandemic is when the project ramped up. So uh, gotcha. Oh, okay. Okay. Boy, that seems like forever ago that I actually saw another human. It's, um, like, yeah. Um, uh, very good. So then there's a few topics within the service mesh working group. Um, if you're, you know, I recommend folks to peruse the slides here, which talk about, I think about five different initiatives within the working group. And my hope is that we'll talk about two in depth today. Because this initiative, I'm sorry, because the working group does have a number of sub working groups and much to, to chat through and, and things to execute on. There's a, there's the CNCF SIG network mailing list, which I believe is the URL all the way up to here, CNCF SIG network. There's a, um, a, a separate mailing list, a sub mailing list, if you will, for the service mesh working group uh, so that everyone isn't being, everyone who's focused on CNI, for example, or on NATS or something, isn't being bothered with a bunch of service mesh specific stuff. Um, or to the extent that they want to be, that they would they would sign up. So please, you know, if you if you're not signed up on that list and you find what we're talking about today interesting, go sign up, tell your friends. Anyway. Uh, two of the initiatives to to cover today. One is an update on Get Nighthawk. I'm going to introduce people to Nighthawk who aren't as familiar of which there, there may be a couple. Nighthawk is, well, it's a, well, simply, like simply state over, um, overtly simply stated, it's a load generator that doesn't do the project justice. Um, it's, a, it's a performance, it does performance characterization of uh, layer seven, of layer seven um, traffic uh, for gRPC, for HTTP, for, for HTTP2, for, you know, has, has a lot of, of features and um, there's been an open source initiative to help um, get Nighthawk into the hands of many um, and into one of the other projects that we that we talk about on the Meshery project. So there's a few representatives here today. Um, Abhishek, was it, is it you that wanted to give an update on progress with respect to we oh, continue yeah. yeah yeah that's right uh yeah thanks lee uh, for off. uh so, so i just want to give a quick uh, progress update on uh what we had uh, where we had left last meeting um so i just share my screen one second so the screen visible it is all right so uh, uh this particular documentation is uh, being used to so, sort of get the uh, track track the design spec and the updates and, and the ongoing process of this particular project get night uh last time when we uh, when we had this meeting we discussed about the the area of concentration on what what that what are the next steps that we're going to take uh, uh regarding this project uh, so we discussed a couple of items on uh, the CI process, how we're going to uh, publish, uh, build the artifacts and publish night of releases or uh, on different uh, versions. Mm -hmm. So I, I did put up a design spec about it over somewhere over here, uh, mentioning some of the key features like the artifact conventions and uh, uh, oh, one sec. Yeah, basically the whole whole design spec ideas have been up, updated in, in this portion. So for, for someone who's not checked it out yet, they can go over here to look at it. Uh, so, so right now we we've, we've managed to uh, take a couple of steps ahead for on the CI process. Uh, basically, 
we've got a repository where we are currently building a custom CI for for publish, publishing uh, artifacts on get night uh, on the night of uh, on different distributions of uh, night of binaries so so yeah like basically th this the progress is on that we created a custom action yeah th this basically is the definition of the action which takes in uh, certain parameters like the repository to publish to version of the night of to be released uh, the operating system architecture based on every different parameter that uh, we are going to uh, release these different versions and then uh, we, we've got also the ci setup ready to be published and uh, right now we've uh, we've added support for only two of the operating systems which are ubuntu and uh, uh, mac os so these are the two uh, workflows that have been established now but uh, ongoing uh, maybe hopefully the next meeting will be Uh, so yeah, like that. That's basically more or less the update on on the uh, ongoing task of get night ops. Mm -hmm. oh, does someone have any questions? Um, Avishek, your voice cut out there right at the end where you were saying that's kind of that's the progress that's been completed, and next time we might expect and then and then you cut out oh, oh okay i'm sorry about that uh so what i was saying is that next time we meet uh we might cover two more distros which would be fedora that is red hat and also windows we, we'll cover for windows distributions nice good um Any, uh, if there's any, uh, along with that, um, Vinayak, you've been uh, working with a few different contributors, but have been busy behind, actually, I think there's a video of you being busy behind the scenes, building out the, the project website. Do you, I'm going to put you on the spot. I, do, 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 do you uh, have an update there that you'd like to share? Uh, okay, so basically the get night hop website uh, was so far uh, uh, meant to be like a single page website to represent the get night hawk. Uh, so far we have covered. Uh, shall I share my screen? Sure, please. Uh, is my screen visible? It is. Okay, uh, so basically, uh, this is the site that we have been working on for uh, uh, Get Night Hawk, and uh, so far we have achieved uh, all this uh, on the site, and uh, we plan on to, I think, implement a docs collection for this website and a customer review section in the future, and uh, I also a couple of more things are uh, on the list. Uh, for example, a video section to uh, demonst uh, demonstrate uh, some of the things and resources for Get Night Hawk and example implementations. Other than this, uh, we are currently uh, looking, uh, uh, currently making a decision on what the logo for Get Night Hawk is supposed to be. We have a few drafts of it ready and uh, currently doing a informal vote on it. Um, there's a link to those draft logos inside of the meeting minutes. So, so for anyone who has comments or who has um, a design that they think should be the be the design that represents Get Nighthawk, please, please comment. Good. 
I was hopeful that um, there are a couple of other project maintainers that said they couldn't make it today, uh, but they have been responding asynchronously. Um, one of them in particular really avoids any synchronous communication at all costs. So, so um, but anyway, pleased to see the engagement, pleased to see the support from um, Nighthawk maintainers. So, any questions uh, or comments on Git Nighthawk? For Abhishek, for Vineeth, or Vinayak? As we go to transition to the next topic, I'll, I'll say this, if, um, if Nighthawk is somewhat unfamiliar to you, um, there's a couple of really neat things that that load generator is capable of that is part of the genesis or part of, yeah, part of, part of the logic and the genesis behind get Nighthawk itself. Um, the, the, world, the, the rest of the world needs to get their hands on it. Um, there's some interesting ways to characterize performance. So, speaking of performance characterization, the next topic is service mesh performance. And Sunku is here with us, perfect. Uh, Sunku, there's a couple of folks that, that I'm, I'm gonna put you on the spot as well. <laughs> this is entirely, you know, I don't know that this is fair or not, but there's um, some of the folks that are on the call like Blake, um, who've been around the project for a long time um, and others just coming to, to learn what it is. Do you, do you mind doing a, a practice introduction of what the project is? Yeah, definitely put me on the spot, right? <laughs> That's good. <laughs> um, that's good. So we've been discussing about SMB last uh, couple of times. Um, I guess the idea where we um, the discussion came in to the point that um, uh, there are quite a few load generators, uh, like um, like they mentioned, and um, and also uh, what I found uh, running some benchmarks on uh, service mesh type applications that uh, there's some gaps with respect to how performance measurement could be done between layer three uh, uh, tuning versus layer seven tuning uh, with respect to load generators. So in general, uh, the idea is, um, you know, so we need a place where, uh, where we could discuss uh, some of the methodology standards or um, uh, features of how uh, performance benchmarking should be done for service mesh. And um, uh, discussing with Lee, we found SMB is a good place uh, where we could uh, collaborate and build on uh, here. And to the point that um, this could be a sandbox project within CNCF. So from that perspective, um, SMB provides the, the right constructs uh, with respect to where it is going. Uh, one in terms of automated deployment, for example, meshery, using meshery, uh, but it, uh, main thing is it does provide um, integration of different load generator tools versus um, uh, different service meshes uh, along with it. So from that sense, uh, you know, SMB uh, can be a place where we could discuss and build on. Uh, that's about what I've seen so far. Uh, you, can, you can fill in the rest, uh, Lee. Yeah. <laughs> So, see, Sunku, it's all down like the, that uh, with zero prep, zero warning. Um, <laughs> the, it's all downhill from there. Like you, you. Uh, that was fantastic uh, um, to try to add a little more flavor to to what Sunku had just said. Is that if if you're in the, the meeting minutes and you take a, a quick look at the Service Mesh Working Group Charter, uh, well, or you can look at the charter, or I guess the slides maybe have it a little more crisply. Um, I can't, you know, for my part, I can't tell you how many times either I've been directly asked or I've heard people ask, um, what's the overhead of a mesh? Like, you know, what, how much is this going to cost me? And how do I characterize that? How do, as I go to, you know, use it more and more, how do I, how do I make sure that, you know, I've got an ongoing analysis or an ongoing um, hand on what that is? is did I make the right selection here in terms of technologies? How do these things compare? There's so many variables. And so, and so you know, there, there needed to be, to Sunku's point, like a forum for um, 
you know, vendor neutral forum for some of that discussion for the advancement of some of the studies that, that um, different groups, um, different individuals have been doing. And hopefully a common way of capturing and describing um, performance characteristics of um, well, cloud native, well, in some respects, cloud native workloads. They could be running on a service mesh and, and they may not be. You know, much of the goal here is centric to what happens when they are, but it's like, that's probably the first question that people, you know, after, after they say, hey, what's the overhead? They say, maybe in their minds, one of the easiest ways to gauge that overhead is to, to measure, you know, here's how their app is running today. And here's how much that, you know, to, to characterize its performance and its overhead off the mesh and what it looks like on the mesh. And then they start to tune and tweak any number of knobs and, and configurations and diff different service meshes and different versions. And, and um, part, of the, part of trying to make uh, this body of work um, useful is after having engaged with um, a couple of universities, the questions around what applications, what cloud native workloads are represent are, are you know good ones to study and use and um, disseminate knowledge on? Which ones are representative of you know um, the most common workloads that others would have? So just e even the topic of what's what are good sample apps? Um, wh which ones are available? Where, where are they available from? Um, Cor Cornell had been there's a professor there that had worked on a, a few, they've published a couple. Um, I think, you know, much like, okay, well, it's one, one topic, another kind of topic to add additional flavor to what Sunku was saying is that, um, well, there's any, any number of configurations of not just the infrastructure, the mesh, the, what it's doing, your applications, how many nodes and clusters and all that, all that stuff. But there's also <clears throat> um, a myriad of um, test configurations. So is this a, a silk test, a capacity test, a stress test? Does this go on for 10 days? Does it go on for 10 minutes? You, you know, are you, how, how is the, how, you know, there's all kinds of knobs to tweak on the load generators. How are they behaving? Um, different load generator, different load generators measure differently. <clears throat> there's just, there's just so much um, to all of this that, uh, that's in large part like the genesis of why this stuff was created. You'll often hear about SMP and to Sunku's point, like um, the one of the first tools to implement the spec, um, Meshery, you'll hear them talked about um, often together, one because because these are both new and, and kind of um, driven towards part of the same goal, that part of their shared same goal is, um, is that of, making it easy to repeat and run these tests, but not necessarily against sample apps, against users apps, you know, against whatever those are in whatever environment they have, because it's all bespoke, you know, to, to their environment. And so it's about empowering others to go off and answer these questions, because um, part of the goal and part of what I'm hopeful that, um, you know, Sunku and, and the rest of you that are here will, um, commit to and and that we will collectively go off and do is you know defining uh, working with these service mesh um, groups or or those that aren't running on a mesh fine, fine. Um, what are what are those um, representative workloads what what, what uh, I think while I, while I personally consider almost any almost any benchmark, almost any load test that you want to define and run is, is valid. Some of them are not very useful because, you know, no one's got that type of a configuration or, or that load never hits their services um, in that way. Um, that's in part where, I, where I'm, you know, excited that, that um, Sunku and the rest of you are helping advance this because those are things that, that uh, many of you know a lot better. Yeah, uh, to add on to that, I, I mean, what we see, um, especially in terms of blogs being published, a lot of folks have done different uh, type of analysis and some performance numbers, whether you see is still uh, or on why. All right, so there's some suggestions of what could be done, but then they need a, uh, um, a place and a little bit more traction in terms of 
um, you know, establishing a standard patterns, uh, like you mentioned, Lee, and also uh, best practices to see how best to characterize a mesh, you know, what are the aspects to look for. And that is not there today from what I see uh, across. And uh, so how can we, I guess the question is, how can we, um, you know, bring together that type of discussion uh, to here and ensure that uh, you know, some of this work is um, represented across multiple meshes or uh, methodologies that are being discussed online. How can we make it uniform uh, so that's easier to understand, consume? All right. So, um, and one of the thing uh, Lee discussed was having this project as a sandbox project in their CNCF so that it has much better visibility, make it easier to, for folks to contribute and also participate. Uh, but uh, just open to ideas as to see uh, and bring in um, opinions as to what else we could do here. Yeah, everyone else is getting put on the spot today. This is, <laughs> there's a, you know, um, maybe I'll have one more comment and, and that is, like Sunko, to, to your point, um, that, that's one of those, that's what I would expect. And maybe Josh, I think you're the only one that maybe hasn't gotten put on the spot yet. I don't know. But is when you're like, what is important? What are the important signals to measure? Yes. When I say signals, maybe some of you think about the four golden signals from the site reliability book. So I guess I, I, guess I probably am not the right person to answer this, just being. I don't want to say new to the space, but um, unfortunately, I, I'm usually on the, the side of implementing the technology and then other folks go and do the performance for us. Um, I have some folks in the, in the company I work at that I can probably ask what they're looking for and uh, provide feedback that way. But um, yeah, just off the top of my head, I don't really know. I don't really know what I would recommend or throw out there. Uh, uh. Thank you, Josh. That that's not, yeah yes actually from 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 my part I would love to um, for others to bear weight on that or to express opinion on um, how important latency, latency is <clears throat> and the measure you know the long tail latency and, and CPU maybe CPU doesn't matter at all maybe it matters a ton. I will say, just having had to troubleshoot some apps recently uh, where we were running into capacity issues and finding out that it actually wasn't things we were set in cluster level, it was actually application level, but it still still played into it. I mean, having that visibility um, across not just things that we see, obviously, at the Kubernetes or backplane, which is where they thought the problem was, but within after a Java app, um, there's a memory and heat limitation that they were hitting up against, causing the app to keep crashing out. And then they thought it was a Kubernetes limit causing it to then regenerate the pods. But being able to see it from the app level and then you know, through the uh, through what, what our settings are and actually, I guess, if now I don't know, is SMP pulling in values for limits that have been set at, say, the cluster level? So you you may be looking at performance, but you could also see what percentage of your limits you're, you're filling in. So if, say, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm allocating only two gigs max memory to an application that's deployed, would, you know, if that app's hitting, you know, 80% of that limit, not just saying, hey, this is the performance you're getting out of it, but also, by the way, you're, you're pushing really close to a boundary you may want to be aware of to increase that limit. I know that kind of visibility is very helpful for us ops folks, because we don't know when to go increase things until something obviously keeps crashing and somebody calls us and we're like, oh, yeah, you keep hitting, you know, limit, let us up that for you or whatever. Right, because you may be hitting the upper, yeah, you may be hitting the upper bounds of something that was either intentionally or maybe unintentionally configured, but it's a, a soft limit that's um, that's specified and then causing you causing you issues. So, like, if you're not, yeah, if, if you're unaware, if you're unaware of the fact that there's a, a governor or or a limit defined, that then yeah, you may you know, you may be off trouble. Right, and I guess. Yeah, I mean, we can obviously run all sorts of load generation tests and things and spec out and, and figure out what we want to set things at. Then once you actually get into production, it's usually a different beast. And like you said, those limits that are set are sometimes blind to the application owner 
groups, the developers, they don't know what we've said at the operational level. And so they're being called in trying to figure out why the app is not stable or whatever. And really it's, it's something else. So if there's a way to scrape that data together, say, well, we know the app performs well here and we see something you know, going on, that's great. But at the same time, it's your app's performing like it should, you're just hitting these, these boundaries that have been put on you. Uh, and maybe that's something that's already in this application. I don't know enough about SMP to know if, it, if, it's, if that's something that's already baked into the product. I need to play with it a bit to, to understand what it can and can't do already. This is this is a fantastic conversation. Like, um, yeah, um, Joshua, like, while like to answer your question very directly and sort of explicitly, like, while SMP doesn't capture the limit, like a limit that's defined on a pod or 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 across a, an interface today, maybe it should one, um, but then two, even if it didn't uh, long term, that's still the the a very healthy type of a conversation or type of uh, um, information to disseminate, uh, you know, th through a project like this to 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 let others know that they might be ch on a wild goose chase. That like, hey, it you know, some certain percentage of the time you're actually you're chasing down a performance issue that's actually um, you actually configured your infrastructure to do that. Your your configuration is working. You're being limited and it, um, it's like, anyway, that type of a discussion, like A, that's a good, I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a note about consideration for that and, and asking folks that are on this call and, and elsewhere to, to comment on whether or not to include limits in the spec. And then even to the extent that they don't, um, Josh, to the extent that you keep coming here, uh, I might encourage you to like put put pen to paper on just a couple of things that you just said because it's just um, part of what the the charter of the project part of what we're trying to to do with SMP is um, enable a standard way to measure things, enable people with a bunch of knowledge, um, pr you know, tests that have been run and results and things that they can see. Hopefully, on um, on something of a regular cadence, is to empower the service mesh projects themselves to measure themselves in a uniform way use um, and, and publish those results um, in a way in which um, they're in, in hopefully a more fair way than they're being measured today because they're being measured today and and doing doing these measurements is pretty pretty difficult and they and those results being published and a lot of times they're not, they're not it's not quite fair it's either something's being compared and they're not apples to apples or um, or it's not being compared, but um, someone forgot to turn debug off or something like some, someone forgot to actually tune their configuration. So um, some of these projects are getting pie in the face when they, they shouldn't, or, you know, egg in the eye and they, they shouldn't. So when these tests are running, are, are they like you kind of set up a, a, a traffic simulation of what you want to run through it or... Are there like, is there like a real world mix, right? Because I, I, I know what you're saying, because I'm being a networking guy all the time. We always see these specs of what throughput you can achieve. But that's what like perfect sized frames going across the wire. Like they, they, they really, they, they put the perfect workloads across them to show how fast things can work. But in a real world mix, we see a lot more fragmentation or a lot more, uh, a lot, you know, much smaller packets and many, many more packets that need to be handled, things like that. So is there... I guess how is that mix that mix being generated, and and then obviously you'd want to use that same workload against all your different different items you're testing against, so it's a fair a fair comparison, right? Each, if each group gets to set up their own test, they're going to obviously lean towards a test that makes them look good versus one that they're maybe not so good at. Josh, I could, that's such a what an excellent um, topic that you just opened. Like, yeah, like, yes, of course. And uh, use of the service mesh really helps facilitate doing just that. Like it, um, at runtime of the tests, manipulating the mesh and telling the mesh to introduce some chaos um, is one, mech, one way of, you know, um, mixing up the test. And another one is taking advantage of the load generator itself and its ability to, to do just that, its ability to inject faults or um and, and that's very much so squarely like in the wheelhouse of what the spec 
should be considering for. Um, and Do you so know if it has like a playback, playback capability? So this, this is actually a use case that we're looking for today with a certain application that's in a, an environment where it doesn't have, um, the dev environment that we're practicing in doesn't have the same access to components that the production environment does. So we, what we want to do is just take like a packet capture or, or record the traffic. And I've done this with other products on the market that you know, sell very big iron appliances that can record a certain traffic simulation and then you go and play it back in your test environment to get, get that there. Is that, or am I going down like a whole rabbit trail that's not even a part of this product's capability or, or, or test set that we want to look at? No, you're doing you're doing a beautiful you're doing a beautiful thing, which is almost exactly what Sunku had done last time. Then, which is we were talking about service performance. We were talking about Nighthawk, and we were talking about Meshery. And you know, part of his question was, "Hey, where's the where's the line between these things?" Um, and, and you're actually broaching that same thing. Is like you're right that like hey, the the service performance um, as a specification. What, what what is it capable of? Well, it's capable of capturing and characterizing in just in written form, like in YAML form. Capturing and characterizing performance and how you're generating load, what your environment is like, what your configuration is like. You know, like doing that in a uniform way. So it so it's a specification that's like unto its own. It's kind of static in nature. It's sort of like you know here here's a document. This document is written in, in accordance with this specification. Um, you can take this document, this specification that describes all of my environment, the way that I'm you know, generating a bunch of load real quickly and then backing off and then generating, you know, like that describes all those things. I can exchange it with others and um, have them run similar tests. And SMP itself isn't, isn't a capability, but it's a specification that other projects can implement, and, and the first one to, to, to have implemented it is, is this one, Meshery, the use cases of like traffic recording, traffic playback, or like, uh, or to generate test after test, or like performance test after test, is why, is why we're talking about Meshery, Nighthawk, and the spec. So the spec being a document, a standard way of capturing and characterizing all those concerns and considerations. How long do I run the test for? At what intensity? Using what protocol? From what vector? Like how many load generators were there generating that load? Or how, how many playback generate, not generators, but how many, how many of those same load generators, generators were playing back the messages? It, and then to use the load generator to, to do it, the one that we're you know, spending a lot of time on is, is the load generator Nighthawk. And then to, to be able to, to schedule it to capture the output of the tests, to be able to compare the tests, share those tests, centralize them, um, do studies over them, to make it easy to repeat, you know, have repeatable tooling to, to measure these things is why we talk about Meshery. Um, so yeah, so like what a beautiful, you just sort of ran the gamut of the projects. <laughs> the whole stack, okay. Yeah, that's kind of, that's where I'll, I'll, I'll display my ignorance in this case is between these products knowing they're, they're, they're set. So, Thank you for explaining that because that helps a lot. So with SMP, we're talking the spec itself, like you said, definition of what's going on or what to do. And then the other products coming into play, you know, uh, getting that hot going in and actually doing the generation of those workloads and stuff like that. And then Meshery being the, the current or one of the platforms that implemented the ability to actually let us let us try it out in their platform. It's, it's so that makes sense. Thank you. Thank you for explaining that. I appreciate it. Look at that, Josh. You, I was just kidding about putting you on the spot, and now you just explained the other project. You just explained three of the projects in one swoop. Let's go. Um, good. Uh, so, so, um, so the in the next fifteen minutes, kind of, I think you know, unless someone else has another topic, which I will pause for. The next topic was going to be. Um, Donating SMP to the CNCF. And the subsequent donation that, that, I, that I think that we, that I know there's been planned for a long time is the donation of Meshery as well to the CNCF.
So I'll pause before we talk about mechanics in terms of donation. Um, anybody? So question. Um, I sent an email to the service mesh working group uh, email list. Uh, not sure if anybody got it. Um, Outlook gave me uh, uh, this email doesn't exist type of reply. Um, I got, I ended up getting it um, if that. Okay, that's great. Yeah, I had to send it via the, yeah, the website. I, I wasn't able to send it via my email client. Uh, so I'm not sure what, what the issue is. But anyway, if that's working, we'll find a way. Yeah, and so could you? Yeah, yeah, exactly, oh. it's the one. Oh, wait a second, Sunku, I think I'm having the same problems. I had sent a couple of emails, one yesterday and one today, and they don't seem to be showing up. <clears throat> did, did Sunku, did you get an email about the Nighthawk logos by chance? Because yeah. when I sent it via the, my Outlook, it didn't go through. Okay. Okay, I have to, I'm glad that you brought this up because there's a couple that I've sent to the mailing list now that don't. Yeah, uh, maybe do. There was some network lag. I'm not sure if that was me or everybody else. Um, but yeah, I, I get your point. <laughs> I think I think it was on my side as well. Um, okay. Well, fair enough. Well, there's um, I, you know by by number, I think the majority of you that are on the call have had some amount of helping hand in SMP, or are maybe just learning about it and have a potential vested interest. Um, uh, I think uh, Ken, I think, has already is already helping us get um, get there and get this thing submitted. It's, it's a you know here's an open opportunity for people to make their mark on an upcoming project. This one has been socialized with the CNCF TOC, I think more times than they probably care to have heard about it. Um, and it you know it certainly strikes a chord because it's. In a, in a, you know, from my perspective, it, uh, the CNCF is a great home for an initiative like this because um, it needs to be in a, a vendor neutral place. You know, just trying, trying to, um, the goal here is standardization and um, information. To, so, so point is um, part of the, pro, the mechanics of donating the project is to fill in, answer some questions. And these are the questions and the, the link to those questions is here, here. That doc was just created half an hour ago. So, you know. so is this kind of like a vision as to what the, our, our goals of the project that we want to establish uh, once it's, uh, it's a sandbox project? Feinstein, right? Um, yeah, and well, our, this this particular doc is it's actually literally just a copy of. The Google form that is now used to submit CNCF projects. Okay. And, and so I just copied and pasted the questions off the form into a Google Doc, figuring what no better way than to invite others to participate than. Yeah, know, absolutely. A, yeah. yeah. I will uh, go through that and um, respond to it by tomorrow. No, the deadline I mentioned is 23rd, I guess, right? So want to review by before that. And then, Sunka, one of the things that you just said, though, about part of the charter and the vision for SMP, um, while we sort of reviewed a, some, some of that right now, I don't know that it is extraordinarily explicitly stated prominently. Like, it is, it is explicitly stated in a few different places in some Google Docs over here and maybe in a, a blog post or something over here. But... In, in my mind, that could be made a little more prominent or like, hey, is it an ongoing goal? I would expect like once S&P were to land into the CNCF, um, is it an ongoing goal to, to publish some benchmarks or is it a goal to devise what, what the group considers to be worthy benchmarks, things worthy of looking at? Or, are there a couple of IoT centric ones? Are there a couple of uh, 5G centric ones? Are there a couple of 
And uh, like to, to your point about vision and scope, I, I think that Agree. there's room for clarification. Room for yeah. Absolutely. I, I think as part of the proposal uh, or, or the questionnaire, we can mention that. Also, we can also not um, possibly write a blog along certain lines. I know SMB, we were talking about publishing a blog. Um, whatever we are listing here, we could possibly summarize it in a blog and uh, go through that and publish it in the SMB site. Yes, resoundingly, yes. So, that's an. No. Yeah, internally we had to go through quite a few legal reviews or some reviews before, you know, I can put in my name, but yeah, happy to kind of collaborate here and to find the procedure uh, within my company, how, how I can participate here. Uh, but I think it, it's a no brainer to kind of put it out there in SMB site, so it's very clear uh, for anyone who's looking at it. Sinko, you, you may be a stronger, a stronger person than me. I have, I have quit. A large large tech companies for less than than having to suffer through that project process. So. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's a big overhead, but yeah, no. There, there's some good blocks you have written already, so I think we can build on that definitely. Hopefully, hopefully, all the rest of you feel like that's an invitation for you as well. Um, it, please, please, if you're interested, please do. Same thing goes for Get Nighthawk, uh, and for Meshery. Uh, there's there's, a, there's actually a lot to Nighthawk, and there's there's even much, much more to Meshery, much that hasn't been espoused and written down. So, oh, one one last item. Um, whoops. It, it can I don't I don't know if if you mind me raising up this topic. The um, Josh was giving some fantastic uh, perspective. You know, from from is Ken still on? I think he had okay. I think he had a drop. Good. Anyway, um, one of the things that Ken was privately suggesting is that um, if you, whether or not you know this or not, there's a there's another service mesh working group in the CNCF, and it's the it's the end users um, service mesh working group soliciting input. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, input um, um, from that collection of, of individuals. For my part, I, I think that that would be a wonderful thing to do to ask them if there are specific types of benchmarks or sort of like to Josh's point, um, or do they see a particular pattern that really causes their um, applications issues? Uh, do the, is, it, is, is much of their concern relegated to the mechanics of uh, a canary rollout? something that's a bit more, you know, that, that, that's kind of specific to a surface mesh and what a surface mesh might be helping to facilitate, drop packets in between or redirect or concerns around um, a packet capture and a replay of that when you're replaying those same packets. And yet, it, you know, if you're replaying, if someone just submitted a, a payment <laughs> to your service and you're replaying that in prod, like maybe you're charging them, you know, more than you should. So anyway, I, I totally digress. My the point was there's another um, there's another working group to socialize some of these questions with uh, questions with and solicit feedback from. So, um, uh, Anita, sorry, yeah. sorry, go ahead. Uh, no, uh, along this this topic, uh, I'm surprised there's another working group. Actually, I, I did not tell them. So, is uh, is there uh, enough synergy that can be combined into two, or is it total different charters? Um, no, there's enough synergy. I would have been. It is against my will that there are two, or uh, for, for my part. And the reason that, the, and, and, but it, actually, there's a lot of logic as to, to why there are two. It's I don't I don't actively. Um, for my part, I don't actively complain. The, the concept, the notion is um, so that end users can um, talk amongst themselves freely without harassment or suggestive comments from vendors. It's kind of the, um, is the line of delineation. It seems um, like it's more end user, not just service mesh, but in general, uh, end user focus, there are a few other groups that that are uh, in parallel to some of the technical working groups, if I understand right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. There's a whole, you're right. There's a collection of um, different, um, I, yeah, I think they are called work, they are called working groups, but there's an, there's an end user 
area. And within there, there's a few different working groups on different topics that get together and, and yeah, you cannot work for, or that's part of the divide is like consumers versus producers or. or. Okay. Uh, but that said, what a opportunity lost not to um, have some of that exchange to be able to solicit um, the complaints and provide those to those that are producing the tech or and vice versa. Okay. That's a good idea, definitely. And and they've warmed up to that now. It, they've had a change of guard, and with that, a change of perspective. So so that's so it's another kind of to do item there is to make that connection. Um, uh, on that topic, as we go to wrap up here, uh, Anita, um, it strikes me that you might be in you might end up inter interfacing with clients or, or you consumers, users, as you guys go to um, assist them in their use of some of this tech. Th uh, I'll plant a seed in your mind. Th think about it. You know, if this is an open forum for you know, some of that feedback about, wh about where people are really struggling. All righty. And Anita, you might have said something, but you're on mute. Oh, sorry about that. Double mute it. Um, I was going to say, uh, yeah, I'm not as uh, much on the technical side, but some of our consultants, obviously, they are and they would be um, interested. So uh, I'm taking notes. That's part of why I'm uh, in the meeting. Uh, so I'll make sure to put a line in uh, to talk about like call outs for if there's any kind of um, specific issues or queries that uh, might come up that might be relevant for you guys. Please, that would that'd be nice. It, it's, it's, yeah. Otherwise we're just making stuff up. <laughs> Working with vacuum is not fun. So to totally yeah. understand. All right, the, anything else today? Thank you all. Uh, same time in a couple of weeks. Um, Daniel, Daniel, you're you're whether you're asking for it or not, we're penciling you in. All right, sounds good. We'll schedule some people to join us. Nice. Okay. okay. See you all in a couple of weeks. Bye all. See you guys. Thank you. Bye. Yes, bye.